Good evening and welcome to Economic Forum, a program where we discuss various issues affecting the Zimbabwean economy, be it mining, industry and commerce, agriculture, tourism, to mention but a few. I'm your host, Cynthia Shikaramba. It is good to have you along. Today, we are focusing on agriculture, paying particular attention to the dairy sector. As the nation is working towards Vision 2030, the government developed several blueprints to guide the implementation of different strategies that will see the nation achieve the middle income status for all Zimbabweans by the year 2030. In agriculture, the Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Programme, ZAGP, is one of the strategies and is aimed at tackling challenges faced in the livestock value chain in which dairy is a subsector. ZAGP, as you may be aware, it's a livestock uh, restoration and growth program uh, whose objective is to increase production, productivity and profitability in the livestock sector uh, whilst attending to issues of inclusive green growth and development. So leaving no young person behind, leaving no uh, female farmer behind, but uh, making sure that they are participating uh, in uh, livestock production be it dairy, beef production, uh, goat production, piggery, or poultry. So all these sectors, subsectors of the livestock sector are being covered by the Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth Program, which is a program uh, jointly uh, uh, implemented by the government of Zimbabwe and the European Union with uh, EU support amounting to 40 million euros over a five-year period that started in 2017. This gave birth to the Transform Zimbabwe's daily value chain for the future, TransDVC, which aims to address the root causes of underperformance in the dairy value chain by strengthening the linkages between production, processing and financing. The project is being spearheaded by We Effect in partnership with various government units. Since its inception, the program has seen the dairy industry growing from strength to strength and annually the players in the dairy value chain meet to check on progress in the sector as well as mapping the way forward. We are currently running about three projects. Uh, one of the projects is the TransDVC project that we are talking about today. And uh, we are also running a program which is called Equality First. And we are starting a new project um, under the CIF, some uh, funding arrangement. The new project is called Feeding Ourselves in Dignity, where we are going to be focusing in the next five years on what we call the right to food. So our new strategy is going to focus so much on the right to food, and dairy is also going to be a key component of that. TransGV stands for transforming the Zimbabwe dairy value chain for the future. It's a 7 million euro project funded by the European Union and is supposed to end in 20, December 2022. But we've managed to get a one-year no-cost extension. We are also negotiating for another four-year cost extension. We've managed to do quite a bit uh, as a project. We managed to develop a daily strategic plan, effective from 2022 all the way to 2025. We also managed to have a digital database which is now making it easy for people to actually capture daily information at district at what level by the click of a button. We've managed also to import 500 in-calf dairy heifers, which we distributed to our, to our farmers on a one-to-one -one match. And we are proud that a lot of our productive assets have found a lot of good uses uh, in, in the sector. When we started the project, uh, we only were producing 79 million liters of milk per year. But we are enjoying a 20% growth in the year. So milk production has started to increase. Our target was to produce 120 million liters of milk by December 2020. This was a very ambitious target. We are hoping this year we are going to reach 90 million liters. And then our target, our new target now, by 2025, we should be producing 150 million liters as a country. That will make us self-sufficient because currently our demand is 130 million liters of milk uh, per year. Uh, as you may be aware, uh, these value chains have been uh, encountering a number of challenges, uh, including uh, weak breeds, or I would say inferior breeds, uh, which have not been able to provide farmers the necessary production base and potential 
to achieve high yields, high yields of milk. But uh, what this program has been trying to do is to improve the genetics uh, at the farm level. Working with farmers, smallholder farmers, medium scale farmers, uh, and also large scale farmers in the private sector to ensure that we have improved breeds going into the into the livestock uh, value chain. In 2022, several assets were passed on to dairy farmers on matching grants facilities in order to reduce dependency as well as promoting the sense of ownership by dairy farmers. For us to give you money to buy an asset, you should be matching with some money also towards that uh, asset. For example, under Window One, we are supporting the large scale farmers and large scale uh, processors. What we were doing there is that we were offering a grant on 50 50 uh, matching basis. What we mean is that for an asset uh, worth 80,000, we as the project we would fund 50% of that and the farmer would pay another 50. Uh, under window one, we we're supposed to, to give uh, 15 farmers and processors. So far to date, we've given 14 uh, out of 15. Then under window two, we're supposed to give 30 uh, MCCs and small scale processors. Uh, to date, we have given 30 out of uh, 30. Then we have uh, window three, we're targeting 500 small scale farmers as our project is pro small scale farmers. Whoever is milking less than 200 liters uh, per day, we're supposed to give 500 and to date we've given 321. Also we had um, a window under a wind, uh, Yefa facility where we're saying we, you buy one in Kauf Yefa and we'll give you one for free. So we managed to buy 500 and they were matched by the small scale farmers. So in a nutshell, that's where we're standing and we're almost 90% uh, done. On that note, we take a short break. Join us in the second segment for more on the dairy sector. We are now with the second segment of Economic Forum where we are looking at activities in the dairy sector in the year 2022. Several milestones were achieved in the dairy industry in 2022 and these include the coming in of new dairy farmers and increased participation of small-scale producers which contributed to the rise in the volumes of milk collected throughout the year. We are excited to have also seen over 4,500 dairy farmers in the country being mobilized under the project TransDVC. And in terms of uh, the farmers that have been small scale, we are also excited that there has been a graduation of some farmers who were milking below five milking cows and their number is now variable from 10 right up to about 40, 50 animals. And we've been seeing the project specifically capacitating this level. And we also have a new breed of farmers, which are new entrants into the, into the dairy farming space. And we are seeing them coming in milking between 10 to uh, 50 animals as well. And they are significantly contributing and we are making every effort to actually link them up with processors so that they can have access to finance and can also be fully um, aware of the policies that are existing and that the government is supporting for milk production uh, farmers within the country. We have seen a uh, growth uh, in milk production. Uh, uh, which is quite a, a positive development. Uh, for the first time, I think over a decade, we've managed to achieve, a, to reach a monthly milk production figure of 8 million litres, which we last did uh, in almost two, 2005. And this is quite a great achievement, which is as the main goal for the trans is milk growth. So we are happy that we, the industry is able to grow. Our targets for the past four years. Uh, so far we are hovering around 98 percent, you know, just close to, you know, fulfilling all the obligations that we've set ourselves. Uh, but of course, of those um, activities um, that were not fulfilled, it's not something much to worry about um, because we, we are looking forward to an extension which we can then, um, you know, draw much on that. So 
also, besides that we have reached almost 100%, uh, we recommend uh, that, I mean, there is need for grounding for some particular activities, given that, I mean, um, dairy is a long-term uh, investment and the turnaround period could be around five to six years or so. So then this calls for, you know, uh, replication of what's working best. The project has also been working on animal feed production at farm level in order to reduce the cost of milk production as well as improving animal health through government-initiated silage scheme for livestock nutrition. Another key area we've been looking at is uh, uh, the animal feeds, looking at nutrition, uh, making sure that farmers can produce their own feeds on farm to make sure that they cut on the cost of production uh, because uh, the feed costs uh, contribute up to 70 or even more uh, of the total cost of production in livestock value chain. So we've been trying to work with farmers to educate them on how to reduce the cost of feeds by producing their own feed and also uh, mixing it, uh, processing it um, at the farm level and then feeding it to their livestock. On addressing livestock nutrition, the government has implemented the presidential silage scheme, whereby each farmer is entitled to adequate inputs that will cater for the production of one hectare of silage for the smallholder farmer. In addition to that, the government is also adding some forage legumes to the dairy farmers, whereby they can use this in inclusion with the silage when they are making the silage to improve the nutritive value of the silage. The dairy farmers have also been focusing on reducing the cost of feed, where there's been interaction with nutritionists, some from within the country, some of them as international, um, international experts, such that the farmers can begin to implement um, more of the on-farm feed formulations. We supported the farmers by investing in projects that produced fodder. Some processors have sent up pivots trying to in, improve the nutrition at farm level, producing hay from lucerne and from other um, nutritious grasses. And the hay is eventually uh, given to support the small scale farmers. We did the baseline uh, in 2018. Um, the the cost of feed uh, from the total um, variable cost was hovering around 48 percent, 50 thereabout. Then it shoot up around 2020 um, 20, uh, to around 60 percent. Uh, then we started to commission some studies on, you know, best feeding practices and regimes which are, you know, cost effective for some small scale farmers. So following that model, um, we are glad uh, to say. Uh, that uh, now, I mean, the cost of uh, feed uh, to the total variable cost had been reduced uh, to around 48%. The Trans-DVC project, with the support of the government, has also been working towards ensuring that dairy farmers have a ready market for their produce. And in terms of um, marketing, the program has also been working in terms of solving some of the, uh, you know, last mile marketing problems uh, by working with uh, processors in the milk sector, dairy sector, uh, linking them to farmers uh, through the milk collection centers and making sure that farmers have a ready market uh, to, 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 to supply uh, their produce when they've produced it. As dairy farmers, there is recognition that they are trade agreements, including the African continent free trade agreement that Zimbabwe is participating in. And there is a continuous support that is coming from our government, from our government to ensure that the dairy farmers in Zimbabwe are also positioning themselves to be producing milk at a viable level, at a level where there is sustainability of cost and being able to participate in the importation and export uh, of dairy products. To improve on dairy production education, study circles have been produced for dairy farmers on best practices in dairy farming. Uh, we managed to develop books like Climate Smart Dairy Farming. This will help farmers to improve their dairy farming business using climate smart agricultural techniques. Uh, we also developed manuals on fodder production. You know, in dairy farming, feed costs constitute about 70% of production costs in dairy farming. Hence, we encourage our farmers uh, to do their own farm feed production. Uh, we also uh, developed material on how to feed dairy farm animals. This, this involves the correct use uh, or following correct procedures. 
we also managed to produce uh, to develop the books like like dairy farming practices for milk producers in Zimbabwe this is basically the farmers handbook or the farmers Bible uh, we also developed the material on financial literacy you know dairy farming is a business so we taught our beneficiaries or our farmers to be financially literate. We also developed a book on savings for investment. Uh, we encourage our farmers, whenever they have made the money, they should be able to be in a position to save. Uh, then we also developed a material on how to start their daily farming as a business. So this book uh, is basically a covering uh, on the business aspects of dairy farming then we also managed to produce uh, some pamphlets and flyers about the project which will uh, assist those uh, stakeholders and other everybody who wants to know about the project we've seen uh, most of our farmers being financially literacy capacitated most of our farmers they lacked the knowledge in terms of financials so the project is going a long way in giving or providing them farmers with the study material. We take another short break. Join us in the third and final segment as we continue to take a look at the dairy sector's overview for the year 2022. We are now in the third and final segment of Economic Forum, where we are looking at efforts by various stakeholders to advance Zimbabwe's dairy sector. In a bid to improve the dairy industry in terms of quantity and quality, numerous trainings were conducted in 2022 that were targeted at dairy extension officers as well as the dairy farmers. To address the genetic aspect, there are various programs that the government is involved in. The aspects include artificial insemination, whereby various extension workers from the various government departments are being trained in AI. Uh, these include extension workers from uh, uh, agricultural advisory and rural development services, formerly known as Agritex, extension workers from veterinary services, and extension staff also from research and specialist services. At farm level, we also trained farmers on principled negotiations and you also developed a dairy curriculum for smallholder farmers and also dairy workers so that they can also get uh, key uh, learning issues, uh, training that they can get either from a mentor farmer uh, or any uh, college within their area such that they can gain skills as dairy is a highly skilled um, area. With climate change being a topical issue in the present day, TransDVC project adopted climate smart techniques which benefit the farmers as well as preserving the environment. Uh, we've also been uh, looking at uh, how to improve the housing, the uh, husbandry practices, making sure that uh, we, 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 we promote uh, good agricultural practices that uh, do less harm to the environment and do not contribute to climate change. We've been looking at green technologies, for instance, uh, coming in with uh, uh, solar-powered uh, water supply systems, coming up with solar-powered cooling systems for milk uh, at milk collection centers. trans project is also climate smart um, and also we are encouraging green technology. This year we distributed 25 uh, electric-powered tricycles to small order dairy farmers which will facilitate in the movement of milk from the farm to the market. So next year we look forward to distribute further because uh, the 25 tricycles was just a, a pilot. Next year we'll be rolling out more of these electric uh, tricycles and more of the activities that we did um, this year in 2022 with regards to um, uh, solar powered uh, bulk tanks, uh, solar powered boreholes and uh, many more green uh, initiatives that the uh, trans project um, is rolling out. Though the project has gone a long way in assisting farmers, access to finance from financial institutions remains a challenge to some of the small-scale farmers. 
Daily financing uh, has been very limited because uh, the financial packages that are available, uh, that are being provided by our financial institutions in Zimbabwe, uh, the packages that they provide, that they offer, are not really favorable for daily, considering that daily is a is a long turnover period. That implies that a farmer cannot uh, pay back a short-term loan because he would not have realized the profits uh, during the course of the loan. Uh, so uh, we really need patient capital so that our farmers can have funds, especially for uh, increasing their heads. With new set targets, participants in the dairy industry are looking forward to yet another eventful year, 2023. With uh, no cost extensions that have been provided to most of our projects, they are going to continue into 2023. We will focus much more on sustainable exit strategies, making sure that assets that uh, have been procured these projects are handed over to the final benefiters for continued use uh, into the future. We are also looking at upscaling the successful stories, the successful models that we have uh, uh, developed and piloted and tested and seen that they actually work and we're going to be rolling them out much more uh, also in 2023. We're going to be looking at much more capacity uh, uh, building uh, of institutions at the farm level that we've actually uh, created uh, through the program uh, ZHGP and making sure that they remain sustainable institutions. They're able to recover costs, they're able to mobilize resources, they're able to organize themselves, even training for farmers, they're able to organize marketing arrangements uh, uh, for farmers. We are continuing to encourage all our farmers to continue to produce milk, safe, clean, and cost-effective milk produced such that the processors can continue to get good quality milk to run their factories because it is a value chain that needs to be functional for the dairy farmer to actually be able to be successful. In our no cost extension, our target is to develop breeding centers. So we are targeting six uh, provinces where we are going to set up breeding centers which will be done at commercial farmers, commercial dairy farmers and also in, at institutions. We are also going to capacitate local um, labs, uh, district labs, so labs at institutions, data services labs, and then we are also going, to, we are not stopping farmer mobilization, we'll carry on mobilizing more farmers to make sure that at least our farmer numbers are increased. We are going to increase our A artificial insemination, we are providing more semen, more AI kids, and more training for artificial inseminators so that we increase the genetic, improve the genetics in the dairy value chain. Through the determination demonstrated by players in the dairy sector, Zimbabwe is set to attain self-sufficient status and with time export dairy products to other countries, thereby uplifting the economy of the country. That's all we had for you on tonight's episode of Economic Forum. For your views and comments, do not hesitate to contact us on the details appearing on your screen. From me, Cynthia Jikaramba, and the crew behind the scenes, happy viewing.